Welcome to Coffee with the Therapist this wonderful Tuesday. I'm excited to be here with y'all. And today I wanted to talk about the different types of boundaries. Often people easily recognize what we would call physical boundaries. So physical boundaries include things like stop signs, um, fences, different things that physically separate us, or even you know our physical space, like if somebody's too much in our personal bubble. You know, social distancing is a physical boundary um, that we've created now during COVID uh, or this uh, pandemic time. So those are different examples of physical boundaries, but often people don't also recognize that there are emotional and intellectual boundaries as well. And so today I wanted to delve into all of these different types of boundaries and give you specific examples so you could start to kind of wrap your brain around what boundaries are and when people typically set them. Now again, everybody's boundary set is going to look different depending on your culture, where you come from, your trauma, all sorts of different things. But these are just some general examples of boundary violations that people will typically set boundaries with. And so first I'm going to go into physical boundaries. Um, Just like I said before, they provide a barrier between you and an intruding force, um, or they just kind of set these different, the structure. So like when we're driving, we have these physical boundaries on the road to keep us in our lane safe and in our structure. Um, And, you know, there's other things like personal space, our right to privacy. So that comes up a lot for my teen clients. Um, Often as they get older, you know, parents typically will unintentionally kind of invade their need for privacy sometimes. And so we have conversations about that as well because privacy is also a physical boundary that is needed. Um, And sometimes that's expressed through like a lock on a door or, you know, a passcode on their phone. Um, Although that could kind of start to go into what we call an intellectual boundary, but we'll get into that in a second. Other examples that are a bit more obvious to people tend to be things like inappropriate touching, such as unwanted sexual advances. Um, You know, that's absolutely a physical boundary that we all set, like where if we want people to physically touch us, some people don't even like people touching their arms or even, you know, touching them at all. And so again, that's another physical boundary and there might be multiple reasons for that. And even in relationships, there are people that are huggers and very affectionate And then other people that that's really not comfortable for them and being able to honor where different people are at with that um, in so much as it's coming from a healthy space. So the well, and regardless, you know, as people are healing through things, we still have to honor their boundaries. So let me make that very clear, too. Even if you don't agree with somebody's boundary, the safest thing you can do is to still honor it. Right. And maybe approach them about it in a different way if you do think it's coming from an unhealthy space. But to be a healthy and like safe person where they can actually work on their stuff, like you have to first honor their boundaries. Um, That's kind of that's kind of the way that that is. (laughs) The other thing about inappropriate touching that people don't often think about is tickling. So if you tickle a person and they don't want that, that's also a physical boundary invasion. Um, And some people think that's kind of lighthearted, but for others, it's really bothersome when people tickle them or continue to tickle them um, when they say stop. So if somebody says stop, you know, honoring that would be the safe thing to do. Um, another physical boundary v- violation is something like looking through others' files or their emails or their phone in this day and age, right? Going through their cell phone or their text. Um, and then, you know, like I said before, with teens not allowing others their personal space like barging into their room without knocking. At work, this could look like barging into your boss's office without knocking. Um, It could look like showing up at someone's house without letting them know beforehand. I don't know how many family systems have told me about um, having like in-laws or a parent that will just show up without asking. Um, And so I'm just going to throw it out there that it's probably a good idea to ask people before you show up. Again, for some cultures and families, that's like just part of what they do um, and it's fine. But then for others, it feels very, very invasive. And again, it's about honoring the other person. It's not about you setting boundaries for them. So I want to be clear on that. 
Now, emotional and intellectual boundaries, um, they are boundaries that protect our sense of self-esteem and our ability to separate our feelings from another person's feelings. And when you have weak emotional boundaries, it's kind of like getting caught in the midst of a hurricane without any protection. You expose yourself to being greatly impacted by other people's words, thoughts, actions, and behaviors, and therefore can act in ways that you typically wouldn't um, and end up feeling really hurt and wounded by those people. And so we create these not only with other people, but we also create them with ourselves so that we are also being able to behave and respond in ways that we feel ultimately good about. Um, But yeah, they're helping us protect our sense of self-esteem and self-respect so that we're not so wounded. Um, and hurt and acting out of hurt. So we end up, you know, hurting other people and all that not so great stuff. Um, so some example of or some examples of boundary invasions for um, emotional and intellectual boundaries include things like not knowing how to separate your feelings from your partner's feelings. So maybe projecting your feelings onto another person or allowing their mood to dictate your level of happiness or sadness. So if your partner's in a bad mood, you know, do you find that then you are in a bad mood? Or if they're upset, are you upset? Um, If they're depressed, do you tend to get more depressed too? Or are you able to separate that and maintain your sense of self and still be calm and happy and present? Um, It doesn't mean that we can't have empathy and like, have sadness for our partner being in a place of struggle. Because again, I think empathy is incredibly important, but empathy is very different than just taking on their emotion. Or I don't know how many times, and in every relationship, we're gonna struggle with this a little bit from time to time, but you know, I've seen couples where it's like, well, they got mad, so I got mad, and then it got worse, and then it elevated. And it's kind of this like accusatory, like they made me mad, or they made me this way. And that's technically a boundary violation issue where you're not really setting a good emotional boundary between you and the other person saying, like, even if they're upset, I still am responsible for responding in a way that is calm and for maintaining a calm demeanor, right? And a lot of people, that's a hard truth. Like, I, even for myself, sometimes I like to think that It was the other person that made me so reactive, but ultimately I am responsible for how I respond to a person, even though sometimes it's super, super hard. So I do want to validate that. Um, The other thing is when we sacrifice our plans or dreams or goals in order to please other people, that's a boundary violation we have with ourself. Again, we're betraying our own goals and plans and dreams and not really letting that person see who we are. Um, And also, you know, like I said before, not taking responsibility for ourselves and blaming other people for our problems or blaming the world for our problems. Um, You know, accountability is having good emotional and intellectual boundaries where we realize that, you know, our words, our behaviors and our actions are ultimately up to us. Right. And we're not going to blame another person and say, hey, it's your fault that I'm in this predicament because ultimately we do have choices. Um, And then on the other end, like, you know, I think with when people have been in a relationship with maybe somebody who has narcissistic tendencies or um, narcissism overall, you know, you may find a person who's trying to tell you how you feel or tell you um, what you are. And if somebody is telling you how you feel or who you are, that is also a boundary violation. No one gets to be the expert on you. You are the expert on you and only you ultimately know how you feel, how you are in the world. Um, And yeah, so it's a big red flag if somebody's telling you how you feel or if they're trying to create intentions. So like, say you did something and it really hurt them, but like from your perspective, you were, you did that thing and you're you're sad you did it and you don't want to do it again because you hurt your loved one but you didn't do it out of malintent if they make an assumption and say you know how could you do this you're a bad person or you did this because you um hate me or you did this because you want bad things for me you know again that would be another like boundary violation of saying they know your intent or your feelings behind something better 
than you do. And so it'd be good for you to have a conversation with them and say, hey, look, I'm sorry you felt hurt. um, And I love you. I did not mean bad things for you. And I know that you may feel that way at the moment, but that is not my truth. And I hope at some point you can kind of, you know, calm down. Not Don't tell them to calm down in the moment. Probably not that. But I hope at some point you will also see that. Um, because typically when people are really um, upset and when their brains are flooded, sometimes they don't see things very well and they can kind of emotionally attack their partners um, or, you know, characteristically attack their partners. But again, like I think having those conversations and setting those boundaries around like, hey, it's okay for you to be hurt, but it is not okay for you to tell me how I feel or my intent or that I am a bad person, right? And, and kind of creating boundaries around how you have those conversations. All right, I know I probably just like told you guys a lot of things about different physical, emotional, and intellectual boundaries, but I hope that I started to give you a taste of the different examples of how this can show up in your lives and maybe even a little bit of how what we can say to um, counter that, although I'll go more into detail about how we respond to different things and how we set boundaries effectively in future videos, but I just wanted to give you a taste of the different types of boundary violations. Um, if you have any questions about that, please let me know. I would love to hear your feedback, and I will talk with you all tomorrow.